Hey, it's Amy Shaw, the Soul Whisperer here. I am coming to you from my car uh, early Saturday morning in a very um, cloudy, overcast, rainy, and cold Austin uh, morning. Before I jump into that uh, topic, I just want to detour for a brief moment and say that my YouTube channel is significantly winding down. Um, I'm just finding that it's not really aligning. Uh, with uh, what how I want to expend my resources right now and so I'm doing less and less I don't have a lot of subscribers I don't have a lot of viewers so it's not a huge loss um, I'm probably gonna leave uh, you know the channel up and uh, contribute to it once and again but for the most part I'm really wanting to just focus my resources um, having my boots on the ground here locally and uh, you know spending my time developing quality um, and deep uh, relationships with people in my local community. So that will be less of my talking head. But today what I do want to talk about, what is on my mind, is ascetic discipline. What asceticism is, is um, basically self-discipline. When I think of asceticism, I really think of the yogis or maybe like the Zen monks or the Tibetan monks, you know, um, people that live very clean lives that are very disciplined. Um, they have routines. They really keep themselves, you know, in between these two lines and, and, and there's almost a rigidity to it. Why I want to talk about this is because I believe that asceticism is something that's extremely important to spiritual practice, um, but there's, it, it's a spectrum and there's almost like two sides of the spectrum um, and I think it's really important to understand this. So. The ego is something that we can't escape. I mean, no matter what we do, we can have transcendental experiences through meditation, through spiritual practices, where we're able to um, reach nirvana or transcend the ego for brief amounts of time. But the second we come back down off that mountain peak, we have to get back to life. I mean, we have to go to the bathroom, we have to feed ourselves, we have to pay our bills. I mean, it's just, there's responsibilities that we have of being human beings in these bodies here on this earth right now. And we can't escape that. And those responsibilities, those day-to-day, -day, you know, sort of mundane things require our ego. So we can't escape that. So what, what tends to happen is we can get ego inflation. And ego inflation, you know, immediately when you talk about ego, let me turn down this tool a little bit. When we talk about ego, people tend to immediately think about it in terms of inflation. They think about it in terms of grandiosity, you know, um, self-righteousness, you know, a false pride, that type of thing. That's one aspect of ego inflation. That's the aspect, you know, on this end of the spectrum. Um, essentially, somebody that's in that state is all those things that I, you know, just mentioned. You know, they're grandiose, they're self-inflated, self-righteous. Um, you know, they think that they do no wrong. Out of that comes a lot of uh, ego defense and projection. Um, they tend to like not take accountability for their actions for themselves. Um, you know, they project a lot out onto others, you know, all that type of thing. That's one type of ego inflation. The other type of ego inflation is actually sort of like a deflation, but, but it's an inflation in the sense that the person gets very self-absorbed and that on the opposite end of the spectrum is somebody that's very like down, negative on themselves, a lot of negative self-talk, has very low self-esteem. Um, constantly thinks, you know, if anybody's talking about something bad, they, they take that upon like, oh, they must be talking about me. And so it's, it's a hypersensitivity to, to criticism, to, you know, self degradation, self flagellation, self harm. And so that also is a form of ego um, inflation because of the self absorption that's involved, the sort of self centeredness that's involved in that process. So there are two ends of the spectrum, extreme ends of the spectrum, and then you, you know, obviously like any spectrum, you have this, you know, all these gradients in between. Ideally, we would be in center where we're completely grounded and, you know, we're able to accept and, and, and take criticism from other people and also understand when something's a projection and, you know, and essentially we know ourselves, we're in our power, we're centered. Um, but that doesn't happen for a lot of people most of the time. So most people are not in center. They're somewhere on the gradient. And, you know, uh, uh, any individual can vacillate on this gradient at any given moment in any day. So th there's a lot of flexibility there in our human experience. And, you know, different things can affect where we are on that spectrum. But by and large, you know, people do have a personality tendencies. 
So you'll have people that tend towards this end of the spectrum and people that tend towards this end of the spectrum. I won't go into all the different reasons why and all of this because essentially that's not important to understand right now. Um, really what I want to talk about is ego inflation and asceticism and how that is important to help people come back to center and how that actual asceticism might look very, very different depending on where someone is on the spectrum. So if someone is on over here on this spectrum and, you know, they're very inflated, inflated and, um, you know, they're grandiose and they self-indulge a lot, you know, in um, hedonistic type things, this individual to come back to center is going to need to um, engage in a lot of fasting. So that's giving up things, whether that be food, alcohol, cigarettes, social media, um, you know, indiscriminate sexual encounters, um, oh, you know, whatever, whatever this sort of addiction or hedonistic um, qualities that are keeping that person overindulged, um, they need to, you know, scale that back and become more disciplined. Maybe they sleep too much, you know, they need to um, set an alarm, get up at a certain time. Um, maybe they eat too much. They need to, uh, you know, make sure they're going to the gym every day or, you know, it requires a certain, like, um, pulling into the self, reining into the ego and um, strengthening that ego through um, very rigid and controlled discipline. And a lot of that discipline comes into self-denial or um, fasting of some type. Um, for the person that's on this end of the spectrum, however, you're going to have a completely opposite. And, and, and in some ways, it is like the polar opposite. This person is going to need to do a lot more a lot more work in cultivating joyfulness. So it might be more indulgence. Um, it might be actually less of that um, self-denial and, and things, you know, this, this it's, it's less of the self-flagellation and, and things that, that this person over here needs, this person actually needs more of it. And so um, it's giving, you know, sometimes people that are on this part of the spectrum, they're so type A, um, that uh, they keep themselves actually stuck there. Um, they can't come back to center. Where this person might actually be type A too. So the, the type A personality isn't necessarily um, related to where one is on the spectrum because you can have type A personalities on both sides of the spectrum. But it's the underlying uh, motivation um, that has to be discerned on why that person is engaging in you know, type A sort of you know, compulsive and very rigid behaviors. For this person over here, it, it can fundamentally um, have to do with self-worth and, and feeling okay about themselves. And, and so that it's a, it's a form of self-flagellation to, you know, drive their self. You know, they have this like inner bully, this inner critic that's constantly driving them, driving them, driving them, driving them for self-acceptance and self-approval and they never reach it. And so, um, you know, this person over here can look very ascetically disciplined. They can look very put together, but in actuality, you know, underneath what's happening inside, they're not put together at all. So this person sometimes just needs that permission to sleep in, um, to be okay, to let themselves go a little bit, to, you know, let some of those rigid boundaries go. And, and you know, for somebody that's like that entrenched in that, and, and this is why I want to talk about this more, because I think as a, as a culture, as a society, we're much more like attuned and aware of this person that's over here on this end of the spectrum. Um, we're less... Um, attuned to this and how to help this person come back to center. Um, but this person over here is a very large portion of our culture, of our society, and, and people are struggling this, and I see it, and people that come to me um, are going through spiritual crisis, and they think, what's wrong with me? I'm depressed. I can't get out of bed, and you know, they're very like um, self-critical, and they drive themselves, and they're very hard on themselves. And I often have to tell them just, you know, to allow themselves the permission. And in that is asceticism in a sense. Um, for this person that, that's so used to like be, being driven, being rigid, being all that, um, the asceticism for that person comes into the self-talk of allowing themselves to let go of that. Um, the self-talk and saying, okay, I want to lay in bed in my pajamas all day and that's okay. Um, I need to do that and, and being okay with that and understanding and realizing that that is an aspect of healing. 
um, that that's not being lazy per se. Um, now, now again, it really just depends. It depends on the person. So I, I don't want to like overgeneralize or stereotype this to all people, all people over here, or all people here, because you know each person is going to have their unique sort of constellation of things and all these underlying issues that are making them um, be off centered. But I'm just saying consistently, I get people come to me in spiritual crisis. Who are struggling with symptoms that we, you know, might label as depression, um, but but in actuality they're just in a healing process, and they need to give themselves permission. You know, these are people that are self-flagellating because they're driving themselves. They're saying like, "Well, I want to be this really famous writer, but yet every day I sit down, I force myself. This is my ascetic." This is my ascetic discipline is that every day I will force myself to sit down and for two hours I'm in front of my computer and I'm trying to finish this book. And yet those two hours they spend just in this constant conflict within themselves because the flow, the creative flow is not there. Well, the creative flow is not there is because they're forcing something to happen inorganically. They're not allowing themselves to have that permission to just be in that space where they're not feeling creative. See, they're, dry, they're trying to force asceticism when when the when the the goal the the when the target is actually what's off base you know um for those people the target should be self-acceptance and self-worth and you know going through that healing process when they get in their power and they get to that place where they're feeling good and strong about themselves and they're closer to center the creative energy will just start really flowing out and it won't be a matter of having to force myself to sit down for two hours a day in front of my computer and make things calm that don't want to come. Um, you know, another aspect of this is that I've had a lot of people come to me with that exact problem. Uh, you know, I ha there was this one woman, she wanted to learn guitar. Um, you know, there it's there's a whole backstory to it that I won't get into it of why she wanted to learn guitar. And so it had a very deep personal meaning and connection to her. But yet she wasn't doing it, you know, and she's saying like, why am I spending so much of my time? every day wasted playing words with friends and things like this when I, I want that ascetic discipline to learn to play the guitar and so she was struggling within herself well I mean really what it is is do you really want to learn guitar are we talking about an issue of someone that's just not disciplined and need more and more disciplined or are we talking about someone who's actually not aligned with their soul center you know, are you forcing this issue because you want it to be important to you, but actually it really isn't important. If it truly was important, it wouldn't be this struggle. You wouldn't be beating yourself up. You know, it, we, we wouldn't be going through this. It would just come and flow and you would do it and you would enjoy it. And, uh, you know, that would be the way that it would work. But because you're struggling and because you're beating yourself up over it, it really, you know, should cause you to step back and say, is this thing that I'm projecting in my mind, you know, in my conscious awareness, this thing that I want to be connected to, I'm obviously not feeling connected to in my soul center. Am I okay with that? You know, and why am I forcing myself into this square box, you know, when I'm not square, I'm round, you know, so the thing might not actually be in alignment. So sometimes it's shifting the perspective and just allowing yourself to be who you are. Now, again, when you're talking about somebody that's over here on this end of the spectrum and you're just saying to them, well, just be who you are. I mean, this person, um, you know, might be very undisciplined, very unruly, you know, might even border on manic, you know, just for an example, um, impulsive in their decisions. And this person needs m not to be so much who they are because they're off center. They need to, um, Find that alignment with their soul self, their higher self, that's disciplined. You know, um, they need more of that. These people tend towards, you know, addiction. They tend towards, you know, chasing after that shamanic ecstasy or that nirvana, you know, on a continual basis. Where, you know, this person, these are the people that we call low vibe. These are the people that, you know, um, struggle more with being here present in this life. They struggle more with, I guess, what we would call sacral chakra issues. Um, they struggle more with, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so they, they're going to need a whole different ascetic discipline. 
And for them, sometimes giving you, again, going back to this example, sometimes giving yourself permission to just lay in bed all day is itself the ascetic discipline. So the point I want to make on this journey of healing is that when we go through these periods of ego inflation, um, <clears throat> especially if there's a consistent tendency towards one side or the other that's off-center. Um, both require some level of discipline, self-discipline, ascetic discipline, but how that discipline actually looks um, and manifests is going to be completely different um, depending on, you know, how one leans on, on towards the spectrum and also all the, you know, underlying dynamics of why a person is at that place and, and who they are. So I just want to encourage you to think about those things today and your own process of healing and have a great day. If you have questions or comments, um, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of and I love you guys so much. I just hope that you have a very healing day and that what I offered today was helpful for you in understanding how you might need to move forward in your own healing process.